Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how to use every single setting on the Akaso EK7000 action camera. But before we start, I have a few announcements to make. And if you just want to skip all of this and get right to the setting tutorial, I'll leave the timestamp right down below. Um, but before we begin the video, I have a few announcements. Starting off, I just have to say thank you guys. Thank you guys so much. We're almost at 500 subscribers. Currently, we're sitting at 490 subscribers, I think. And one of my videos, the last video that I made about this camera, is almost at 50,000 views. That's one of the main reasons why I'm making this video, because you guys love that video so much. And also, with the almost 100,000 views, total views for my channel, that's just crazy. So just thank you so much. Next up, kind of sad news, but the computer that I used to edit my videos on is being fixed right now. So this probably isn't going to be the best edited video ever, so sorry about that. But without further ado, let's get into the video. Uh, before we start like showing the settings, this camera just got popular, very popular, uh, after the GoPro Hero 7 was released. And this camera, just the GoPro Hero 7 Black, is a great, great, great camera, but... It's very expensive, and people wanted to know if the settings are the same, if if it's just if it's worth it to get a cheaper camera when this is sitting at four hundred dollars or three hundred fifty dollars, and this is at like fifty or forty dollars. So uh, this is one of the reasons why I'm making this video on settings. But here we go. Starting off, here's just how to get to the settings. Here's how to get to the settings. You're gonna click this back back button. One two three four and then you're going to get to the setting page where it just has a big wrench and you're, going, and you're going to click the shutter button at the top and it's going to bring you to the settings and then you're going to use these bottom or uh, arrow buttons to move up and down starting off with video resolution to select them you press the top one there are many video resolutions you can you can do this at 1080p 60 frames per second which is good quality and can offer two times slow motion so that's pretty good. And then 1080p 30 FPS, which is good, good quality, and will save more storage on your SD card if you don't need slow motion. And then there's 4K, 25 frames per second. Great 4K, not great frames per second, but that's okay. 2.7K 30, uh, 720p 120 frames per second, which can be 4X slow motion, so that's really good. And then 720p 60 frames per second. So that's all there is for the settings for the video resolution. And to select these, let's say I wanted to do 4K, you're going to just press this top button and whoop, it's activated. And uh, if you want to check what your video resolution is, right here, it's going to tell you 4K 25 frames per second. And back to the settings, looping video. Looping video is going to be great if you're using this camera as a dash cam or trying to, I, I don't even know. <laughs> you guys tell me what you'd want looping video for. Looping video is when you have a video going and it's gonna record for 10 minutes and then it's going to record another video for 10 minutes. It's gonna stop that one, record another one. And then once that one's done, it's gonna delete the first one. So you're just gonna always have this 10 minutes of footage and you're gonna be able to check back on that. And if you ever wanna stop it and save that footage, you just press the shutter button on the top. So that's good for dash cams if you just want it recording all the time. And uh, if something is like caught on your camera, then you press the button and it'll save it and keep on going. So tell me guys in the comments what you want to use this setting for. Next up is the timestamp. You can have it so in the bottom of the in the bottom right hand corner of your video, it'll tell you what the date is, what the time is, uh, when the video is recorded. So you can have that on, off. And then you can have it just the date or the date and time. Next up is exposure. This is gonna this is going to tell you how much light is gonna come into your camera. So if you want a video or picture to be really bright, then you're gonna put on higher and lower. You can have it to be darker. Next up is photo resolution. Click that, and you can do 12 megapixels. 12 megapixels is pretty decent. It's what's on most f smartphone cameras these days. 8 megapixels, oops, 8 megapixels, 5 megapixels, and 4. 
And also right next to it, it tells you the exact size of the photos. And then next is burst photo. You can just have this on. And, oh, yep, just on, I guess. <laughs> There's no way to turn it off. Um, so it's going to say three photos. So go up to the top here. Uh, and to access burst photo mode, you're going to press this back uh, mode button right here. One, two. And this is going to be burst photo mode. And you can see because it has the three little, uh, little photo things right there. Um, when you click the shutter button, it's going to take three photos. And this is going to be great for if you're taking a picture of someone like jumping off of a pier or something. It can take three photos and then you can cycle through and find which one is the best. Uh, next up, we have time lapse. And I bet many of you guys know what time lapses are. They're when it's just a moving, very sped up video basically. But this is using pictures, so it's gonna, if you have it on two seconds, it's gonna take a picture, wait two seconds, take another picture, wait two seconds, take another one. And so you have two seconds, three, five, ten, twenty, thirty, and sixty. And all these, all these pictures that it's gonna take are just gonna go straight to the gallery, and you're not gonna stitch it together. Unlike something else like the GoPro, the GoPro will automatically stitch all those pictures together. But this you're going to have to do in some external editing software or something. Next up is continuous lapse, which is kind of like the looping video, but for the time lapse. And then power, freq power frequency. You can do it at 50 hertz, 60, or auto. It's going to basically choose what's best. And then language. This is a great thing about this camera, which for pretty cheap money has a ton of languages. So... You guys can pause it and see if there's, if your language is on here, or, there's just, there's a lot of them. Yeah, so that's all the languages. Uh, let's say you want to change it to Spanish, you're going to press the shutter button, and then everything's going to be in Spanish. All your settings, I guess not that part, um, but that's all going to be in Spanish. Then you can go back to English. Uh, date and time you can set the date so to move it up you're going to use these buttons 2020 blah, blah, blah. right now it is 2019 and then to move on to the next thing you're going to click the shutter button and then you can set the date here and then here i actually don't know what the date is uh something like that and then you can set the time which i also don't know what the time is and this is going to go back to where it says date and time and whatever you have set here is going to be down there. And then sound indicators, indicators, the shutter button is whenever you take a picture. It's going to make that noise. And then start up is when you turn it on, it's going to go like doo doo doo. And then um beep, this is just going to be whenever you press any buttons, it's going to beep. Oh, I find it highly annoying, and I didn't want it to annoy you guys this whole video, so I'm just going to leave that off. And then right here, you can adjust your volume, 0, 1, 2, 3. And, yep, so that's the settings for the beeps and everything. Then, upside down mode. This is, if you turn it into upside down mode, it's going to flip your screen upside down. Pretty, pretty self-explanatory. And, uh, an annoying thing is these are going to be inverted now, so when you press the top one, it goes down, and when you press the bottom one, it goes up, so that's kind of annoying. And, I'm just going to turn this off, <laughs> so it's easier to show the rest of the video. Screensaver, this is for when your camera, if you just have it sitting here, uh, then the screen will just go off after a while, like, uh, like the GoPro right now. When you click it, it'll go back. Um... So the screen will just turn off, but the actual camera will still be on, and this light will be on. And to deactivate the screensaver, you just press any button. So you can have that one minute, three minute, five minutes. And then power save is just like the screensaver, but except for except for just turning off the screen, it's actually going to shut off the whole camera, and this light will go off, and you're going to have to start it up again. Format, this is not going to format your camera, but your whole SD card. So uh, don't do this if you have footage that you like want to keep on your SD card. Because it's going to delete it all. And then reset. This is going to reset your whole camera to all the default settings and everything. 
uh, and then version, I should say EK7000, that's the name of the camera, and then just the model number and some other stuff. I <laughs> don't really know what that is. Too many numbers. Yeah, so that's all the settings on the Akaso EK7000. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Tell me down in the comments below what you guys are going to use this camera for. And just thank you guys again for all the support. Uh, see you guys next time. Thank you.